What's up guys, this video is going to be a tutorial on how to connect a Neki Orbi mesh system. In this case I have the Orbi 770, in fact I have a 3 pack of it and I'll show you guys how to connect it by actually showing you guys with Ethernet cables. I also have a switch, un unmanaged and a managed switch. Uh, some of these parts are optional and I'll show you guys again the various ways of connecting it and we'll start off with a typical setup where it's a modem and a router. Now, if you have a modem router combo, I recommend disabling the router portion of that modem router combo. And typically, depends on the model it is, but typically the way you do that is there's a sticker. So in this case, I'm actually hiding the sticker because it has info on it. But typically, the, there's a sticker that tells you how to access it. And it's usually like an IP address or something like that where you type into a browser, you gain access to it. And then you want to look for a disable router or an enable bridge mode. Uh, or something along those lines that will disable that. You can optionally call your ISP, your internet service provider, and ask them how to disable the router portion, or you can ask them if you can replace it um, with just a modem. Or you could just you know, go get your own modem and make sure it's compatible with your ISP. So obviously, I'll leave those to you, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna assume that it's just a modem or just an ONT. Um, there's something that's providing you internet access. Uh, and you might be asking, well, what's the advantage of a mesh system over a standard router, uh, and why even get that? Well, um, basically a mesh system is two or more devices that work together to increase your Wi-Fi coverage. So basically, instead of having one router, you, you could, I mean, even though this is physically a satellite, it's kind of like having two um, that are basically increasing your Wi-Fi coverage. So when you're walking throughout your home, it automatically switches between them and there's nothing you need to do. You're still hooked up to the same Wi-Fi name, which is your SSID. And as you're walking throughout your home, let's say you have your Wi-Fi device, uh, it'll automatically switch you over to the best possible connection. So it's, it's actually fantastic for um, just having coverage, uh, having good coverage in your home. Um, okay, and I'm actually going to demonstrate all the various connections because I have the Ethernet cables and again, I mentioned that already. Um, so let's just get started. Uh, so this is a typical setup, uh, modem, router. So what you want to do is unplug your router and you're going to put that off to the side. You don't need this router anymore because this Orbi is actually a router. This blue one with the sticker on it, this is actually physically the router. And basically, you just plug in the Ethernet cord to the internet port on this Orbi. So right here, uh, you get the Orbi app on your phone. It's on iOS or on Android. Uh, you follow the instructions. It, it'll basically tell you to turn off your modem, wait for like two minutes, and then plug this in, and then power it on, wait for a light to blink. It usually walks you through that. And then it asks you to pick a Wi-Fi name and password. Now, the Wi-Fi name and password, or the Wi-Fi name, which is the SSID and password, if you want, you can actually pick the same Wi-Fi name as your existing router and your devices will automatically connect to this new one. Uh, so you wouldn't need to go and you know update your devices to basically join a new Wi-Fi name unless you wanted to join a new Wi-Fi name. So that is an uh, option as well, but that's again, that's your decision. So at this point in the Orbi app, when you get it set up, when, this is, when the router is done, it asks you to plug in the satellites. So you go ahead and just power them on. So you plug in the power, power them on. They're not physically connected to anything right now. And then it detects it, it takes a couple minutes and then you have a, now you have a wider network set up. So you now have really good coverage throughout your home. Um, now I might ask you, you might need to relocate the Orbeez. So once you set it up, when you unplug it and you take it to, let's say, another room, maybe the distance wasn't too good or it was too far or too close or whatever. So the optimal distance is typically around 30 to 50 feet away, but it depends how thick your walls are. And just so in my case, when I do my wireless backhaul testing, it's typically around 35 to 40 feet away around that uh, with a couple walls in between. Um, and I usually get a pretty good signal um, using it that way. Um, so it, again, it depends on your situation, but once it's set up, you can unplug it and then plug it in, it takes a couple minutes, goes back up, connects to the network, and then devices start connecting to it if they're close enough to it. Um, yeah, so at this point, your network is actually set up, you're good to go, and if this is all you needed, you are golden. Now, 
if you want to get faster speeds. Now, this is a Wi-Fi 7 mesh system, which actually has really good wireless backhaul speeds. And wireless backhaul just means that the satellite is wirelessly talking to the router. So in this case, they're both on wireless backhaul. But in case, let's say you have an Ethernet cable running through your attic, and you can actually get a better connection that way. So what you want to do um, is basically get an Ethernet cord. Again, let's just assume you have an Ethernet cord already running. You can actually pick any one of these three ports on the router and then connect it to any one of these two ports on the satellite. And now, basically, you have a wireless backhaul connection and a wired backhaul connection, and you can mix and match them, which is fantastic. Um, so another thing you could do, again, your network's up and running, you're good to go, uh, is that even though this isn't a wireless backhaul configuration, it's just hooked up to power, and then these, this is talking to the router, you can actually take, I'm gonna use the purple one for this one. Let's say you have a computer um, near this guy, you can actually run an ethernet cable from the computer to this, and assuming the purple one's hooked up to the computer itself, you can actually do this, and it would actually get the computer pretty good um, Ethernet speeds. Um, obviously, assuming the, the computer can handle the speeds and everything like that, but running it off Ethernet, you can actually do that, even though this is wirelessly talking to this one. And I actually have separate videos where I demonstrate this, and, and it's actually pretty surprising how big of a difference it makes when you hook it up via Ethernet, even on a wireless backhaul note. So that's actually pretty awesome that you can do that. Uh, obviously, you can also connect it to, uh, you know, the router. Uh, you can hook up the computer to the router directly, or you could hook it up to the satellite um, that's hooked up via Ethernet, and this would give you the best possible speeds because now you have wired everywhere. Um, so again, now you get to a point where you're like, okay, well, I only have two ports on my satellite, and I only have, you know, a few other two open ports on the router and I'm running out of spaces and I have more Ethernet connected devices so how do I add more ports do I need to get another satellite what, what, what is it that I do well the most inexpensive way of doing that is by getting a switch and an unmanaged switch is typically the way to go if you just simply want to expand your ports so what you could do is you could basically um, Again, you have various options, but you could go from router to any one of the ports you want on the unmanaged switch. I usually pick the first one or the last one. Um, so I'll pick the last one in this case, but you're free to use any one of these, any one of the ports on them. The unmanaged switch will automatically detect which one you're connected to, and you are free to use the seven other ports in this case, and you can connect your devices to it. So now if you want to hook up your computer through this, well, guess what? You can do that. And if you still want to run wired backhaul to the satellite, you can just run it from this to the satellite and you're good to go there. So now you're still a wired connection because everything, this, is, this still has a full physical wired connection to the router. So it's still a, considered a Ethernet backhaul or a wired backhaul. And you could also um, run the Ethernet cable that's coming from the router and run it to the satellite like so and then from the satellite let's use a blue one just so it's easier to see and then from the satellite you can actually just hook up an ethernet cable um, to this and then hook it up to the unmanaged switch here and this is also fine. So in this case, if again, the purple one is hooked up to your computer, then you're, you're good to go. So the blue one sucked up to this and the switch is just simply expanding your ports. Now, a common question I get asked is, can I connect the modem to the router direct? Uh, sorry, can I connect the modem to the switch and then from the switch go to the router and go to all three? And the simple answer is no the router must always be directly connected to the modem. So you can't like unplug the internet port off this, connect this to the switch, and then connect this guy um, 
to the internet port of the router. That's not going to work. So the, the router must always be, so you, you basically can't do this. The router must always be connected directly to the modem because the router has something called an NAT, a network address translation, and that needs to be connected directly to, mo to the modem so you can have a proper um, network. The switch doesn't have that capability. The switch basically follows afterwards and the router is basically telling the switch like, okay, you could sign these IP addresses to these guys and this is how they're gonna talk to each other. So the router is uh, instructing this guy, but if this guy comes before the router, the router does not instruct this guy. So you always want the switch to come afterwards. Um, so really the most important thing is for the router to connect to, this, uh, to the modem directly. Um, and then after that, you could pretty much connect it any way you want. You could even connect a switch to the wireless backhaul node right here and basically use, use the wireless backhaul node, wireless backhaul satellite to the switch and expand your ports that way as well. And that's also fine. And if you need more ports, you can even hook up this switch to another switch if you wanted to. Now, my other switch is a managed switch. Now, typically managed, so managed switch can do everything a regular and unmanaged switch can do, but it can also do a lot more. But the, the thing with unmanaged switches is they typically cost a lot more than uh, sorry, managed switches typically cost a lot more than unmanaged switches. And because with managed switches, you can do a lot of stuff. You can actually customize stuff. Um, you can make separate VLANs, which are virtual local area networks, so you can separate out networks. Um, that's really the main function of a, uh, of a managed switch. It can do a lot of other stuff, but that's really what most people would use it for. And this specific one can also do power over Ethernet, so if you have access points, you can actually provide power over Ethernet so as long as you're using a compatible Ethernet cable and a compatible access point that can take that. Um, so that's why these things cost more because you can do that. But you can also get a managed switch and just use it like an unmanaged switch. It's just, it's kind of like a, I don't know, it's kind of like a waste of money uh, because an unmanaged switch costs a lot less and it could literally do that. If you're not customizing anything, then a managed switch um, is not necessary even though you know if you have one lying around you can use it but it's not really necessary um, and you can also have you know multiple switches you can have one switch connected to this guy one connected to this guy one connected to that guy to expand your ethernet ports um, and obviously let's get rid of the switch for a quick second um, another question I get asked is does the router have to connect to the satellites directly and directly and the answer is no so the satellite can either connect to the router directly from this port to make a wired backhaul connection or it can connect to the satellite so one satellite can also go to another and that would still be considered valid in a wired backhaul connection so you have a lot of free play again the most important thing is for the modem to be hooked up to the router directly after that you could pretty much connect it just about any way you want. Um, and the only other thing that's worth mentioning is the fact that, let's just say you were running a wired backhaul setup. So let's get rid of these ethernet cables. And you just wanted a wired backhaul setup, right? So router hooked up to your modem and then these guys are wirelessly talking to this guy. And you know, when you're walking with your Wi-Fi device, if you're in this room, it'll connect to this guy. If you get closer to this one, it'll switch you over. You don't need to do anything on your uh, device itself. You, this is not something like, oh, I'm closer to this one. Let me go to my Wi-Fi settings and connect to this one. No, um, it's all automatic. You connect to one Wi-Fi name. When you're walking throughout your house, it automatically switches you to give you the best possible um, connection. But the one thing I wanted to mention is... If you can, it's not always possible, but if you can, you want to have the router in the middle. So these guys talk to the router directly. You, you could also connect it like this, where a satellite goes to this guy, this guy, this guy. The satellites are always going to try to connect to the main router. Um, but in the case, if it's too far away, it will try to connect to the other satellite, which will try to connect to the router. However, now you have two Wi-Fi hops, and this guy's going to suffer from the speeds. It's going to be slower than this one because this one just has one Wi-Fi hop. So you want to 
minimize the Wi-Fi hops if it's possible. Sometimes it's just not possible because the modem is on one side of the house and you're connecting it directly and it's just really not that possible. But if you have a choice, um, you do want the router centrally placed. So with that said, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment sections below. I will try my best to answer them. Um, and this setup that I told you guys would is pretty much very similar to an Orbi 970 or pretty much any of the other Orbeez uh, where you connect it like this. And, and whatever I said um, should be valid in most of the, in, in the ones I'm thinking of, the Orbi 970, the Orbi 963, the Orbi 863, uh, the Orbi 753. Um, those should all be valid um, with the way I explained it. Um, with this one. But again, if you guys have questions, uh, let me know in the comment sections below. I just wanted to show you guys, again, the various different ways of connecting it. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you guys did, I would appreciate it if you guys uh, click the subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching and I will leave the product links and all this stuff in the description box below if you guys are interested as well. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.